Hey guys, I thought I would try something a little different today. I was thinking about what can I do that's been a little bit different than what I've done in the past. Um, I'm not sure about people who have their own channels uh, like Steve and Al uh, that I follow quite a bit. I'm not sure if they run into the problem of deciding what to do next, um, if they feel like they run out of ideas or whatnot. So I thought I would shift gears a little bit. And uh, not only do I like to play the baseball board games, but I also like to read baseball books. So I thought I would talk about a few of the books that I have uh, accumulated over the last couple of years. Most of these books I have bought off Amazon for 99 cents. Uh, you can really give them the cheap bin. I think you pay four bucks for shipping. So it's less than five dollars a book. A couple of these I think I picked up at Goodwill as well. Um, they're great reading, uh, even though they're a little bit older, and it gives me an insight into maybe some of the seasons that I was too young to remember, or some insights, more insights into the seasons I do remember. The first book I have here is uh, for George Will. It's called Minute Work, and it's The Craft of Baseball. And for anyone who's not familiar with that, basically what he does is he takes four key baseball people from the 80s, Tony La Russa as the manager, Oral Hershiser as the pitcher, Tony Gwynn as a hitter, and Cal Ripken Jr. just simply as a overall baseball player. And it chronicles uh, their daily routine and so forth. And it's a great read. Uh, I've enjoyed it. I've read it a couple times. I don't necessarily agree with George Will's take on baseball all the time, but it's still an uh, interesting read. So that's one book I have, uh, and there's another book here that most people probably have heard of if you're a baseball fan, and that's David Halberstrom's book, October 1964. I got it in the paperback version, which is why I got it so cheap, and that just chronicles the 64 season and, of course, culminating with the 64 World Series. Obviously, that was a year before I was born, so reading that definitely was able to... Uh, learn some things about uh, the past, past baseball. Growing up in Virginia, we're not that far from the Orioles, and this was before the Nationals came along. So the Orioles back in the 70s and 80s were, you know, kind of the local team, even though we're a couple hundred miles away. So Earl Weaver was uh, one of the people who I grew up uh, trying to learn things from as a manager and uh, just his commentary on the TV broadcasts, and so forth. And he did a book that uh, I read, which is actually kind of funny. It's it, it's it's actually insightful, but it's uh, still funny. And it's called, It's What You Learn After You Know It All That Counts. And uh, this is definitely one I got off Amazon for 99 cents. It's a great read. Um, if you can find any of these books, I highly recommend them. Maybe your library has them. You can get them for nothing. Um, I'm all for a good bargain. Uh, but it's a good, it's a good one. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I also enjoy some of the older World Series. And so this book I found called Down to the Wire. And it's about the 1967 American League race. There was a 14 pennant race in 67 that went down to the wire, which is why it's called that. And so especially Red Sox fans, Steve Tower, I know you're out there. Uh, if you haven't read this book and you want to learn about some of the uh, the Impossible Dream season of 67, this book uh, chron chronicles it very well. Um, so that's an a option there. If you want to go way back in the Wayback Machine, if you remember Peabody in the Wayback Machine, this book I got from the library and I liked it so much I went out and bought it on Amazon as one of the 99 cent books again. And it's uh, written by Joe DiMaggio's brother, Dom DiMaggio, on the 1941 season. That was the season Ted Williams hit 406, and Joe DiMaggio had his 56-game hitting streak. And it talks about baseball life back in those days. Um, and the name of the book is called Real Grass, Real Heroes. So that's an excellent read. I definitely recommend that to anyone. And a little bit of a more obscure book I found, just in the searching, and it doesn't say it explicitly, but it, I do believe it's referencing Jim Leland here, and the book does uh, go through uh, the 92 
most of the 92 season for Jim Leland's Pittsburgh Pirates. And it's called The Toughest Job in Baseball. What Managers Do, How They Do It, and Why It Gives Them Ulcers. So that's a, a nice little read. Now, getting more modern times with the World Series uh, in, from 67, we're going to jump to 75. And that was one of the greatest World Series of all time. And this book is called The Long Ball. The Summer of 75, Spaceman, Catfish, Charlie Hustle, and the Greatest World Series Ever Played. It's not only a book on the World Series, but it's a, it's a book on the whole season um, that talks about the different characters, Charlie Finley's A's, uh, Pete Rose, Bill Lee, the spaceman, and all, you know, comes to conclusion with the 75 series. So that's a great read. Keeping in tune with the 75 season, another book I enjoy reading was called The Machine. And this is uh, talking about the 1975 season, a hot team, a legendary season, and a heart-stopping World Series. The story of the 1975 Reds. And uh, for those of you who uh, dabbled in History Maker Baseball or who have not yet purchased History Maker Baseball and would like to, the 1975 teams, the World Series teams, Reds and Red Sox, are the two teams that come with the game. So uh, that definitely uh, can maybe get your interest going on these 75 series and get some reading done on uh, the 75 series. And the last book I bought uh, most recently off the One Cent Amazon uh, website was a book about the 1984 Detroit Tigers. And it's called Bless You Boys. And it's written by Sparky Anderson. It's a diary of the 1984 Detroit Tigers season. Now, before you uh, think, well, wait a minute. This is supposed to be a channel about demoing baseball games. This is not the Book of the Month Club. You are correct. But I'm doing this to set up my next idea that I had. And that's with the last two books that are showing here. The last two books of the 84 Tigers World Series team and the 75 Reds World Series team. What do they have in common? They have Sparky Anderson in common. And in reading this book about Bless You Boys, Sparky Anderson uh, makes no bones about it. He claims that the 84 Tigers were a better team than the 75 Reds. So I thought we would go ahead and uh, see if that's the case. So I have pulled out from the original game of payoff pitch, I'm sorry, of uh, History Maker Baseball, the 75 Reds that came with the game. And I have homebrewed the 1984 Tigers using the ratings book that I bought uh, from History Maker Baseball that goes into more detail than what the actual instructions do. So that's uh, what I've done. And I've got it all set up and we'll get ready to get to that epic challenge between the 75 Reds and the 84 Tigers will be playing at Riverfront Stadium and I'm going to call it the Sparky Anderson Bowl even though it's a baseball game not a football game so sit back and enjoy and we'll get ready for the Sparky Anderson Bowl okay here are the starting lineups for the Sparky Bowl it is leading off for Detroit will be second baseman Lou Whitaker batting second is the shortstop Alan Trammell Hitting third is the right fielder, Kirk Gibson. Batting cleanup is catcher Lance Parrish. Hitting fifth is the left fielder, Larry Herndon. Batting sixth is the designated hitter, Barbaro Garbay. Hitting seventh is the center fielder, Chet Lemon. Batting in the eighth position, first baseman, Daryl Evans. And batting ninth and playing third base is Marty Castillo. And on the mound is the ace of the staff, Jack Morris. For Cincinnati... It'll be Pete Rose leading off at third base. He's not banned from this game. Joe Morgan is batting second and second base. Tony Perez hits third at first base. Johnny Bench is in the cleanup spot from his catching position. George Foster will bat fifth and play left field. Ken Griffey hits sixth and plays right field. Using the designated hitter in this game to make it even and fair, as it did in 1976 World Series, even though the game's in a National League park, It'll be Dan Dreesen. Batting in the eighth position is shortstop Dave Concepcion. And batting ninth, the center fielder, Cesar Geronimo. 
And on the mound for the Reds, the ace of the staff, Don Gullett. The game is being played, as I said, at Riverfront Stadium. I did not pull out the Al Wilson photo of uh, Riverfront Stadium. I wanted to keep things a little bit more simpler. But I do have the stadium card that came with the 75 uh, World Series set when I bought the game. 75 Riverfront Stadium. You can see it's semi-big for right-handed hitters and semi-big for left-handed hitters. So with ballpark qualities coming to play, that will uh, be called into um, into where we have to pull it out to check it. Now the world, the umpires. I'm using the ones that came with the '75 World Series set. So the Reds will have their own umpires. At home plate is Nick Colosi. At first base is Dick Stello. Second base is George Maloney, and at third base is Satch Davidson. And on the umpire qualities, the umpires at the corners, first and third, are both strict and questionable qualities. And the second and home base umpires are the respected and lenient qualities. So I'm trying to get a mix there as well. We've got our bench here for the Reds uh, and the bullpen. And we've got our bench and bullpen for the Tigers. So we're all ready to go. First batter up will be Lou Whitaker. And he will be facing Don Gullett. I designated my hot and cold players for the game. Kirk Gibson is the designated hot player for the Tigers. Chet Lemon is the designated cold player for the Tigers. For the Reds, the designated hot player is Tony Perez. And the designated cold player is Ken Griffey. So with all those festivities out of the way, it's time to get going in the Sparky Bowl. First, first annual and maybe the only annual Sparky Bowl. So we'll see what happens here as Don Gullett faces Lou Whitaker. We've got our first salvo fired by the lefty Gullett. And it is a 3-4-5. Three, 3-4-5. Four, five. Three, four, five. Ask, is it Johnny Bench an iron catcher? No, he's a semi-gold catcher. So we skip that. Good eye. Does the batter have good eye? No, he does not. So it's a strikeout. So right off the bat, Don Gullett... Puts the K on Lou Whitaker, and that uh, result was in blue. So now we're going to go to the right now chart. And since uh, Gullet just struck out Whitaker, he is semi hot. Alan Trammell, of course, his first at bat, he is neutral. So we get a semi hot pitcher against a neutral hitter. And let's see what uh, Gullet can do with Trammell. The Result is a 4-4, and on the right now chart, 4-4 asks, batter steps out of the batter's box, timeout, then takes ball four. So Trammell draws a walk on that uh, right now chart. So Trammell is aboard on the walk, and that'll bring up Kirk Gibson. Kirk Gibson. So Gibson is the batter against Gullet, and here's the delivery. It is a 2-4-6. 246 ask does the pitcher have control? Don Gullett is a semi-control pitcher. Decider die says he's not a control pitcher this at bat, so we skip that. Next result ask is he eager or sad sack for Gibson? He is neither one, therefore he walks. So Gibson draws a walk, back-to-back -back walks. It does say that active runner steals second, but Trammell is already on second ahead of him, so he will stay there. So Gullet with a little bit of uh, issues finding the plate here, has walked two in a row. And that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Lance Parrish. And the pitch is a 4-4-5. Four, 4-4-5 four, five. Four, four, five asks, is the pitcher a workman? He is not. Is the hitter patient? No, he's actually semi-eager. So it's a ground out to first base. And on a lead die of four, runners advance one base on a ground out. So that's a ground out to Perez. He will take it to the bag himself for out number two, but the runners do move up a base. We've got runners at second and third now for the left fielder, Larry Herndon. So Larry Herndon with the chance to see if he can put the Tigers in the lead in the first. And the pitch is a 2 6 6. 2 6 6 ask, is Gullet a struggler? He is not. I'm sorry, no, I'll take that back. It's runner on first. I looked at 2 5 6, not 2 6 6. There is no runner on first, so he's not picked off. Uh, Herndon is not a leadoff batter, so we skip that. So the last result is a fly out to right field. So Herndon flies out to Griffey. Inning is over. 
Nothing doing for the Tigers in the first, so after half an inning here at Sparky Bowl 1, it is the Tigers nothing and the Reds coming to bat. Okay, Pete Rose leads things off against Jack Morris. I, and again, the Tigers uh, are my homebrew team that I rated the best of my ability using the ratings book and, and the statistics that I found off BaseballReference.com. So Jack Morris, I have rated a semi-star, semi-flash, and semi-control. And, uh, of course, he's an icon because he has been around a while. And Pete Rose is a hero, semi-scrapper, and a semi-good eye. So we'll see what happens here. Pete Rose to bat. It is a 3-3-5. Three, 3-3-5. Three, five. Three, three, five. Ask, is the pitcher wild? No, he's not. Is Pete Rose a sad sack? No, he's not. It's a single to right field and a stolen base, except for the fact a stoic runner holds, and they list Pete Rose as stoic, so he does not steal. He simply gets a base hit. So Pete Rose leads off with a single, and that'll bring up Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan steps to the plate. And the pitch is a 3-5-6. Three, 3-5-6 five, six. Three, five, six asks, are they the same? No, he no, they are not. Morgan's lefty and Morris is righty, so we skip that. Utility or sad sack? Morgan is neither one. So it's a single down the first base line. And on a single, runners advance two bases. So on a lead die of three, the base runner advancement is two bases. So Rose motors over to third base, and the Reds now have runners at the corners right away out of the, out of the shoot here, and uh, Sparky's uh, proclamation that the 84 Tigers were better than the 75 Reds is at least looking in jeopardy at the beginning. Here's Tony Perez. Perez, the batter, runners at the corners, and nobody out. It is a 2-5-6. Two, 2-5-6 five, six. Two, five, six says is Jack Morris a struggler. No, not yet. You struggle. He's a struggler if he gives up three consecutive base runs. He's only given up two so far, so that's not a struggler. Skip that. Is Perez a champion or patient? He is neither one. So we go to infield drama. So we've got infield drama, and we'll roll the two die and the two dice and the decider die to figure out this infield drama. And here's the, the result. It's a two-three on infield drama. Two-three states second baseman iron. No, Lou Whitaker is not iron, so we don't have to worry about that. So it would have been a safe on first at an error, but this time it's a ground out. So it's a ground out with a lead die of two, which is a fielder's choice. So it's a fielder's choice. Rose will score on the ground out. Morgan is out at second, four to six for the first out, and Perez takes first base. So the Reds now grab a 1-0 lead on the ground out. The Tigers were not able to turn two, just a force out at second. So Perez is at first, one out for Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench, he works fast and he doesn't stink because he uses Blue Emu. So let's see if he can get that going here in this game. And there's the pitch. It's 1-3-4. 1-3-4. Ask, is it a gold catcher? is Lance Parrish a gold catcher? And Lance Parrish is not rated as a gold catcher. He is rated as neutral. So we skip that result. And now it asks, is the batter a champion? The batter is not a champion. Johnny Bench is not a champion. So now we have outfield drama. So we had infield drama, the last at bat. Now we have outfield drama. So let's see what happens here on outfield drama. It is a 4-6. 4-6 for outfield drama. Ask, is the left fielder iron? The left fielder Herndon is neutral. He is not iron. So it's a running grab of a hooking line drive line out. So a line out, and that result is in purple. So that means we're going to go to the team chemistry chart for the next at bat. Uh, Herndon hauls in benches drive for out number two. So George Foster is up now with the team chemistry chart. And like some other folks like to do on this game uh, that don't do the chemistry very often, we just call both teams neutral, and that's what I'm doing here. So it's neutral against neutral. Foster facing Morris. 3-6. Three, 3-6 six. Three, six 
Ask, is the batting team harmony? No. If he did have harmony, it would have knocked a deep drive off the wall. Otherwise, it's a pop fly to left. So Foster pops it up to Herndon in left field. Inning is over, but the Reds do break through with a run. And after one inning from Riverfront, it is the Reds one and the Tigers nothing. Okay, top of the second, and Barbaro Garbay is stepping to the plate to lead things off. The designated hitter against Don Gullett. It is a 2-6-6. Two, 2-6-6. Six, six. Two, six, six. Ask, is there a runner on first? No. Is he a leadoff batter? Yes, he is. He is leading off the inning. So it is a single to center field. So there's where the leadoff batter role comes in. As he's leading off the second, he gets a base hit. So Barbaro Garbay, thanks to that result on the board, got a base hit. And that'll bring up Chet Lemon, the center fielder. Chet Lemon. It is a 2-3-3. Two, 2-3-3 three, three. Two, three, three ask, is the pitcher an ace or a star? Gullet is a semi-ace. Decider die says he is an ace, so he is the ace at this at bat. So the ace batter, or ace check, is a ground out to short with a lead die 2. That's a fielder's choice. So that is going to be a 6-4 fielder's choice. Lemon will take over at first base on the fielder's choice. There's now one out. And Daryl Evans, the lefty, lefty on lefty matchup against Don Gullett. Evans, the batter. 1 4 6. So a 1 4 6 ask, does the pitcher have flash quality? Gullett is a semi flash. Decider die says no, not this time. So we skip that and we go to the batter card to see if he's a champion. Daryl Evans is not rated as a champion, so we skip that and it's a ground out to second base. But with a lead die of one, that ground out of second base becomes a 4-6-3 double play. So the inning is over. 4-6-3 double play. And the Tigers are taken care of here in the second. So we go to the bottom of the second with the score still Cincinnati 1 and Detroit nothing. Ken Griffey, Ken Griffey Sr., will lead things off against Jack Morris here in the bottom of the second. And the pitch is a 4-4-6. Four, 4-4-6 four, six. Four, four, six ask, is the pitcher a star? Jack Morris is a semi-star, but Sider Dice is not this time. It asks, is Griffey a sad sack, utility, or patient? He is neither. So it's a single to right field. Active runner steals, but they don't list uh, the card is not rated as an active uh, player for Griffey. So it's simply a single to right field. And that is in red. So we're, the next at bat for Dreesen is going to be off of the player experience chart. So Dreesen is a semi prospect, and Jack Morris is an icon. So no manager cards yet in this one. As Sparky manages against himself, schizophrenic managing. So Danny Dreesen is up and. Jack Morris, the icon against the semi-prospect Dan Dreesen on the experience chart. It is a 1-6. One, 1-6 six. One, six says icon pitcher. Yes, he is an icon pitcher. Fools batter into swinging an inside pitch, ground out to short. So it's a ground out to short. Lead dive was a 1, so that's a double play ground out. So the crafty Jack Morris got Dreesen to hit into a 6-4-3 double play. For two quick outs, crafty veteran Jack Morris able to get Dreesen to turn over on a double play ball. And that'll bring up shortstop Dave Concepcion with two outs and nobody on base. So let's see what Concepcion does. It is a 2-3-5. Uh, sorry, 2-3-5, not a 1-3-5. 2-3-5. And a 2-3-5 asks... Is the pitcher wild? No, he's not. Uh, is the batter eager? Concepcion is semi-eager, but the cider die says no. So then we go to ground out to second base, unless the batter is patient, which he is not. So it's a ground out to Whitaker, and Concepcion is out of there in the second inning. So we've played play two complete in Sparky Bowl 1, and the score is the Cincinnati Reds 1 and the Tigers nothing. 
Okay, Marty Castillo, the third baseman, will lead, and also a backup catcher for the Tigers, will lead things off for the Tigers in the top of the third. And the pitch is a 2-3-6. Two, 2-3-6 three, six. Two, three, six Ask, does the pitcher have double control? No, Gullet just has semi-control. Is the pitcher batting? No. So we skip that. It's a walk. So Marty Castillo draws a walk off of Gullet. And for Gullet, that is his third walk issued. So he's definitely having some issues with the strike zone today. And now we flip the order up to the top. And Lou Whitaker, who struck out his first time up, will step to the plate and see what he can do. It's a 1-4-5. 1-4-5 asks, is he a struggler? No, he's not a struggler. Uh, the batter area is blank. So it's a ground out to first base. And since the lead dies a 1, it is a double play. So it is a 3-6. Six three, double play, two down very quickly, and that'll bring up Alan Trammell. A lot of double plays in this game so far. Perhaps that AstroTurf helps with that. Here's Trammell. Two out spaces empty. It's a one one two. One one two asks, does Gullet have the flash quality? He's semi flash, and the cider die says he is flash, so therefore it is a strikeout. So Trammell, Trammell strikes out to end the top of the third. And now we go to the bottom of the third. And do up for the Reds. It'll be the center fielder, number nine hitter, Cesar Geronimo. And then the top of the order. But first things first, here is Geronimo. He's rated as a semi-scrapper and a semi-whipper. So let's see what uh, Geronimo can do. It is a 1-3-6, one, 1-3-6. Three, six, one, three, six. Ask, is the pitcher an ace? No, he's not. Is he a whiffer or cold? He's a semi-whiffer. Decide or die says he's not a whiffer. So therefore, we have infield drama. So we're back to drama again. Infield drama for this time for Geronimo. And let's see what the result is. It's a 2-3 on infield drama. 2-3, ask, is the second baseman iron? Uh, Whitaker is not iron. Therefore, it's a routine ground out. So Geronimo grounds to Whitaker for out number one. And now we're back to the top of the order, and Pete Rose. Pete Rose singled his first time up. So he does this time. It's a 2-3-5, and a 2-3-5 checks, is he wild? And Morris is not wild. He's actually semi-controlled. So the next check, is he eager? Is Pete Rose eager? No, he's not. He's actually semi-good eye. So it's a ground out to second base. Unless he's patient. He's not patient, so it's a ground out to Whitaker. So two consecutive ground outs to Whitaker. And quickly two away for little Joe Morgan. Base is empty. Two outs. The pitch. Three, six, six. Three, six, six. The pitcher area is blank, so we skip that. Is he a pinch hitter? No, he's not. So it's a fly to center field. And the inning is over one, two, three. So after three complete from Riverfront Stadium... In Sparky Bowl 1, the score is the Reds 1, the Tigers nothing. Okay, Kirk Gibson will lead off the top of the fourth. And we'll see what he can do. He walked his first time up. Here's the pitch. It is a 3-4-4. 3-4-4 asks, is the pitcher a prospect? Gullet is not. Is the batter patient? He's semi-patient, but the sire die says no, not this time. So he pops up to second baseman Joe Morgan for out number one. So Kirk Gibson is retired. And that'll bring up the catcher, Lance Parrish. Lance Parrish. Lance Parrish. And the pitch is a 2-3-5. 2-3-5 asks, is the pitcher Gullet wild? He is not. He is in this game, but he's not rated wild. Uh, he has been wild so far in this game. So we skip that. Is the batter eager? Lance Parrish is semi-eager. Desire Die says he is eager, so we will go with that result. It's a single through the shortstop hole, unless he's a whiffer. And lo and behold, Lance Parrish is a whiffer, so that single is taken away and it's becoming a strikeout. So Lance Parrish goes down on strikes because he is rated as a whiffer. And that'll bring up Larry Herndon with two outs and the bases empty. Two outs and the bases empty for Herndon. 3-4-6. Three, 3-4-6 six. Three, four, six is blank on the pitcher card. 
Eager is the batter eager, and Herndon is not eager, so it's a base on balls. Active runner with steal, Herndon is not active. It's yet another walk for Gullet. That makes four here in four innings. And that will, uh, result will be in purple, so we'll go to the chemistry chart uh, for the next at bat for Barbaro Garbay. Keep in mind, both teams are neutral. So let's see what happens here on the chemistry chart. Say so two six, two six. Ask is the batting team harmony? No, it's not. So it's a ground ball to second base. It would have been a single, but in this case, it's a ground ball to second base. Joe Morgan makes the play, and the inning is over. So we go to the bottom of the fourth. Still one nothing Reds, and leading off for Cincinnati will be the first baseman Tony Perez. He singled his first time up. Actually, his single is the one that drove in Pete Rose for that first run. So he had an RBI single his first time up. Let's see what he does this time against Morris. It's a 1-1-3. One, 1-1-3 one, three. One, one, three asks, is Morris an ace? He is not. It asks, is the batter a slugger? Perez is a slugger, so it's a double to left field. Double to left field. It's got the little lightning bolt there for the optional role, uh, advanced option of a home run legend, but I'm not using that, so we're going to stick with Perez hitting a double. So Perez leads off with a double, and that brings up Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench. It's a 2-5-6 for Bench. 2-5-6 asks, is the pitcher a struggler? No, he's not. Is the batter a champion or patient? And he's neither one. And so now we have infield drama. So we've got infield drama with a runner at first. This could be interesting. So let's see what happens here. 3-5 on the infield drama. 3-5 asks, is a third baseman iron? Third baseman, Marty Castillo, is neutral. He's not iron. So therefore, it's a routine ground out. And on a lead die of three, it's a fielder's choice. So... Perez will hold with the ball hit in front of him, and Perez will stay at second and benches out. One away. One away. It doesn't say exclusively whether the runner advances on the out there, but logically speaking, if the ground ball is hit to third and a runner's on second, he's going to hold, So, especially since Perez is not that fast. So that's what I'm going with, right or wrong. And now George Foster is up with one out. And it is a 1-1-3. One, one, and a 1-1-3 one, one, check is whether Morris is an ace. He is not. Is the batter a slugger? He's a home, semi-home run king, but he's not listed as a slugger. So it's a single to center field with two stars behind it, which means we have to check if he's a sad sack or a home run king. He is a semi-home run king, Decider die says he is a home run king, so therefore he strikes out rather than get a single. So that's a big play there. Foster out on strikes for out number two. And that'll bring up Ken Griffey with two outs. And Perez still perched at second. And Griffey the batter. It's a 166. 166 ask is Morris a workman? He is not. Is the batter Griffey a whiffer? No. So it's a ground out to third base. So it's a ground out to third base to end the inning. It is in red, so the first at bat of the fifth inning will be off the player experience chart. But nothing doing for the Reds there in the fourth. So we go to the fifth, still one nothing Reds. Okay, top of the fifth, and uh, Chet Lemon is up. He's a semi-prospect, and we are going off the player experience uh, chart. And Gullet's a semi-icon, so Gullet will have the advantage right now. Let's see what happens. It's a 2-3. Two, 2-3 three. Two, three asks, is it a prospect batter? He's a semi-prospect. The Sire die says he's not a prospect, so he's not a prospect batter. So he doesn't momentarily have a lapse in focus. So he grounds out to third base. I'm sorry, I looked at the wrong ones. Prospect pitcher, not prospect batter. Prospect pitcher. Well, still the same result. Gullet is not a prospect. He's a semi-icon. So instead of giving up a single, he gets a ground out to second base. So Lemon grounds to Morgan for out number one. And that'll bring up the first baseman, Daryl Evans. 
Daryl Evans. First base. And let's see what he can do here. Get our bench in order here. Okay. Daryl Evans stepping up. And the pitch is a 4 4 5. Ask, is the pitcher a workman? No. Is Evans patient? Yes, he is. He draws a walk. And that is the fifth walk given up by Don Gullett. So far, it hasn't come back to haunt him. But uh, he's playing with fire here, I do believe. And now Marty Castillo steps up, number nine hitter. It is a 2 3 4. 2 3 4 ask. Is there a runner on base? Yes, there is. So we got plate drama. Plate drama due to the fact that Evans is on first base. So we do plate drama here and see what happens. There is the result is a 2-5. Two 2-5 five. Two five asks, is the catcher gold? Bench is semi-gold. Decider die says this time he's not gold. So therefore, we go he does not he would not dig the ball out of the dirt. So it's catcher loses it in the dirt, and it's a pass ball. So pass ball moves Evans up to second base with one out. And still at the plate is Marty Castillo. Castillo. The pitch is a 2-5-6. Two, 2-5-6 five, six. Two, five, six. Ask is the pitcher a struggler? No. Champion or patient for Castillo? No. Infield drama again. So we're right back to, we had plate drama, now we're at infield drama. So infield drama for Castillo with Evans at second. It is a 1-3, one, 1-3 three. One, three for infield drama. Ask, is the third baseman iron? Pete Rose is semi-iron. Desire Die says no. So we, uh, it's not going to be an error. It's going to be a routine ground out. And a routine ground out it makes it 5-3. to three. Uh, with the pass ball, it took the double play out of the equation, but Evans will hold it second. So now there are two outs. And top of the order, Lou Whitaker with a chance to tie the ball game with a base hit here against Gullet. It's a 2-3-6. 2-3-6. Ask, does he have double control? No. Pitcher batting? No. It's a walk. So another walk for Gullet, and that is getting up there now. I believe it's the sixth walk of the ball game. Runners are at first and second. I didn't mention it earlier, but of course he did move from being fresh to being semi-fresh because of the fact we're in the fifth inning. So with two on and two out, Alan Trammell steps up. The MVP of the 84 Tigers. See if he can do anything here. And it's a 4-5-6. Four, 4-5-6 four, in the pitcher category is blank. It asks, is the batter patient? He is semi-patient. The sire die says he is. So it is walk number seven for Don Gullett. And now the bases are loaded with two outs. And who steps up to the plate but 1988 World Series hero Kirk Gibson. Lefty on lefty matchup. Two on, two uh, bases loaded. And here might be the pitch of the game. It's a 2-4-6. Two, 2-4-6. Four, six. Two, four, six. Ask, does the pitcher have control? Well, he didn't display it in this game so far, but he is rated as a semi-control pitcher. Desire Die says he does have control. So, therefore, it's a ground ball back to Gullet. He'll throw to first, and the inning is over, and he gets out of that mess and escapes without allowing a run. So, we go to the bottom of the fifth. Still one nothing in favor of Cincinnati. And Dan Dreesen, the designated hitter, will lead things off for the Reds. And as they catch their breath after that inning. So here is Dreesen, 1-2-6. One, 1-2-6 two, six. One, two, six Ask is the pitcher fresh? He's semi-fresh because we're in the fifth inning. Decider die says no, he's not fresh. So we skip that result. Is Dreesen a sad sack? No, he's not. So it's a single pass second base, and the result is in blue. So we're going to go to the right now chart. <clears throat> right now chart. And the batter is Dave Concepcion. Concepcion, uh, in his last at bat, grounded out. So he's neutral. And the pitcher is also, actually, let's see, the pitcher duh, 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 is semi-cold because he gave up a hit that time. So he's semi-cold against the neutral. So we'll see what happens. 
to 3-6. Three, 3-6 six. Three, six asked, is it a cold pitcher? No, he's semi-cold. The sire die says no. So he's not a cold pitcher, so he does not miss the outside corner for a base hit. It's a pop out to the catcher, Lance Parrish. So Concepcion pops it up to Parrish, one away. And now we go to the ninth place hitter, Cesar Geronimo. Geronimo. It's a 4-4-4. Four, four, four. So a 4-4-4. Four, four, four. And we'll check that and see what happens here. 4-4-4. Four, four, four. The pitcher spot is blank. The next check is whether the batter is a scrapper. Geronimo is a semi-scrapper. The sire die says no. So it's a double to right field with three stars behind it, which means if he's a home run king, he gets a home run. Geronimo is not a home run king, but he did hit the double. Now the double, let's see here, runner advancement. Two bases on scores on double with a lead die of four. So Dreesen comes in to score on that double by Geronimo, and the Reds take a 2-0 lead. 2-0 lead. And now we're back to the top of the order for Pete Rose. Still only one out. Geronimo at second. And the pitch. It's a 4-5-6. 4-5-6. Pitcher category is blank. It asks, is the batter patient? No, he's not. It's a fly out to center field for out number two, and that result is in purple. So we'll go to the Chemistry chart for the next at bat for Joe Morgan. Both teams again neutral in the harmony or in the uh, chemistry category. So here we go. It is a five-five. So five-five asks pitching team dissonance. No, they're not dissonance. So it's a foul out to Lance Parrish to end the inning. But the Reds tack on another run, and at the end of five. It is the Reds, two, and the Tigers, nothing. Lance Parrish will lead off the sixth against Don Gullett, who has walked seven batters in this game, but has somehow pitched around it. So here's the pitch. It's 3-4-6. Three, 3-4-6 six. Three, six is the pitcher category is blank. The batter is asking, is he eager? He is semi-eager. The side die says no. Therefore, it's another walk. So that is walk number eight. Walk number eight for Gullet. It does say active runner with steal, but obviously Lance Parrish is not active. He's actually stoic, so he's going to stay at first base. And that'll bring up Larry Herndon. Larry Herndon. And the pitch is 1-3-5, so we've got the unusual play results. And with the lead die of one being in blue, that is the umpire check. So the umpire check with a runner on first is what we're going to go with. So let's see what happens here on the umpire mini chart. And the result is a 2-6. So on the umpire result, 2-6 asks, respected umpire at home. Nick Colosi is semi-respected. Decider die says no, he's not respected. Had he been respected, the batter would have doubled. Base runner breaks for home and he's out. Otherwise, umpire calls runner safe. So that means that... Parrish was able to score on that double by Herndon. A respected umpire would have called him out, but Colosi called him safe. So there's where the umpires can come into play here. And so the Tigers are on the board, cutting the lead to 2-1 to one now, thanks to that double by Herndon and the fortunate call by the umpire, Nick Colosi. So Nick Colosi, you made an impact, my friend. And now it's two to one. And Barbaro Garbay is up. And the Cincinnati bullpen, Pedro Bourbon, is loosening as Gullet seems to be struggling here. So here is Garbay. The pitch is a two, three, four. Two, three, four. Ask is are the runners on base? There certainly are. So we go to plate drama. Plate drama with runners on base. Had a lot of drama in this game. So let's see what happens on plate drama. It is a 1-6 for plate drama. Ask, is the catcher iron? No, he's semi-gold. So there's not a pass ball. Otherwise, low and away ball. And the result on the ball is in orange, which means we go to the umpire chart again. We were just there. Now we're going back. And the runner is on second base this time. So we're going to use the umpire chart with the runner on second. So let's see what happens here. 
The result is a 3-4, and the umpire chart asks, questionable umpire at second. No, uh, second baseman George Maloney, second base umpire, is respected and semi-lenient, so he's not questionable. Calls runner out at second base despite second baseman's foot off the bag. Otherwise, umpire rules runner safe, batter out at first. Oh, I'm sorry, I looked at the first base one. That didn't make sense. It's a 3-4 off the run, uh, ba- uh, second base umpire. Questionable umpire at second, same result there. Line out, let's see here, 3-4. Line out, runner called out at second despite missed tag, double play. Other umpires rule runner safe. So it's a line out, and it would have been a double play had the umpire been questionable, but it's not a double play. It's just a line out to second for out number one, and no double play involved. So just a one out there, and now Chet Lemon. Sorry about that. Misread that a little bit. So Chet Lemon is up with Herndon still at second as the tying run. And we get 1-3-5 again. Unusual play. The red die is a one. Um, The one die is a red. I'm sorry. So that means we're going to the memorable play. And we have to look at what the three, what color the number three is, and that's blue. So I'm going to the one red and black five, which is under box and bogeys. It's a highlight reel under box and bogeys. So we're going to see what happens here under box and bogeys. So here we go. It is a one, two, and it says routine fly ball lost by the outfielder, batter safe at second on a two base error. So didn't say which outfielder it was. Uh, we'll go ahead and call it uh, Geronimo in center field. So he lost the ball in the outfield. And Lemon will reach on a two-base error, E8, two-base error. And Herndon will come around to score to tie the ball game. We are now tied at two. And Red's kind of crumbling here in this inning. And that will bring up the first baseman, Daryl Evans. And Sparky's not going to go too much longer with Gullet the way things are going. But he does have a lefty-lefty matchup, so we'll stick with him for one more batter. And here is Evans. It's a five, four, five, six. Four, five, six. The pitcher area is blank. It asks, is the batter patient? He is. So it is a walk. But hold one second. I have, uh, in, a, in my attempt to bring in more lefty-righty splits in the game than what's already there, I went ahead and predetermined before the game started that any blank pitcher result where the pitcher and batter share the same handedness That will now turn into a strikeout instead of a blank. So Evans is down on strikes. Should have mentioned that uh, before the game started. Forgot to. But any of the uh, I don't like any of the blank pitcher uh, results if I can avoid it. Uh, If they're the same handedness, that turns into a the same result as a three five six. So there's two away, and now Marty Castillo is the batter. But Gullet will be lifted. They won't take any more chances. Pedro Borbone is now into the ball game. So Pedro Borbone is your new pitcher. And he will face Marty Castillo, the third baseman. And Castillo steps to the plate with the tying with the go-ahead run lemon at second base. The pitch is a 1-3-4. 1-3-4 is it a gold catcher. He's semi-gold, Johnny Bench is. The cider dice says he is gold, so it is a strikeout. It is a strikeout. The check on that would have been good eye, but Castillo does not have a good eye. So it is a strikeout to end the inning. But in the sixth, the Tigers pick up two, and we go to the bottom of the sixth. Tigers two, Reds two. Tony Perez leads things off, and Jack Morris has now gotten a boost of energy thanks to that those two runs. So here we go. It's a 2-4-5. Two, 2-4-5. Four, five. Two, four, five. The pitcher is blank. But we have a righty-on-righty matchup, and that's where the splits come along, and that is a strikeout for Tony Perez. One away, and that will bring up Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench. And as we take a small breather from the game, we do have a spectator that has just joined us. My little cat, Levi, has just joined us. Hey, Levi. How you doing, buddy, buddy? There you are. He's checking in out. The Sparky Bowl. He heard good things about the Sparky Bowl, so we'll see. Here's Johnny Bench. 225. 225 for Bench. 
225 asks, is the pitcher a star? Jack Morris is a semi-star. Decider Die says no. It asks, is Bench a slugger or a sad sack? He's a semi-slugger. Decider Die says no. So it's a single to center field for Johnny Bench. So it's a one-out single to Bench. Active runner with steel, but Bench is not active. Although he could be with Blue Emu, but he's not active right now as the rated by the cards. So this was prior to Blue Emu, so he is not stoic, but he's just neutral. So that'll bring up George Foster with one out. And that's a 3-5-6, and that is the legitimate 3-5-6, which is the same. Morris righty against Foster righty, so that is a strikeout again. Two down, and that'll bring up Ken Griffey. So Ken Griffey, Ken Griffey, the batter. It is a 3-3-5 three, three, for Griffey. Ask, is the pitcher wild? No, he's not. Is Griffey a sad sack? No, he's not. It's a single to right field. Stolen base, but Stoic holds. But we can't steal because uh, Bench is ahead of him. But let's see about the runner advancement here with a lead die of three. The runner's advanced two bases on any hit, so he can steal second. So, Bench will go to third on the single by Griffey. Griffey singles, and since second base is open, he does steal second base. So now runners are at second and third with two outs for Dan Dreesen. Dan Dreesen. The pitch is a 4-4-5. Four, 4-4-5 four, five. Four, four, five asks, is Morris a workman? No. Is Dreesen patient? He's semi-patient. Decider die says no. So it's a ground out to the first baseman Evans to end the inning. So nothing else for the Reds. So after six complete in Sparky Bowl 1, it is the Tigers 2 and the Reds 2. Okay, guys, an attempt to speed things up a little bit. I've gone ahead and played the top of the 7th already, and Detroit did not score. We go to the bottom of the 7th. Uh, Trammell led off, uh, Conception led off, and Trammell made an error to let him on first base, and then Geronimo walked. So I lifted Jack Morris for Aurelio Lopez. And now we have uh, Pete Rose at the plate, and the result was a foul ball, which leads us to the umpire chart. So that's where we're picking this up. Runners at first and second, umpire chart with Pete Rose at the plate. And it's a 1-1. 1-1 one, one says respected umpire at first base. Dick Stello is not respected. He's questionable, semi-questionable. So it says batter safe at first, runner out at second, other to third. Other umpires call batter out on close play. So that is a double play. It would have been a fielder's choice, but instead it is a double play. So Rose has grounded into a 6-4-3 double play. We're out number two, one and two, and Concepcion moves over to third base, but now there are two outs, and it'll be up to Joe Morgan to see what he can do against Aurelio Lopez, and here's the pitch. It is a 2-5-5, five, five, and a 2-5-5 five, five. result is 2-5-5. Five, five. Ask us to pitcher a star. Aurelio Lopez is a star, therefore it is a strikeout. It is a strikeout. So the inning is over, and Lopez pitches out of the jam. And after seven complete here at Sparky Bowl 1, it is Detroit 2 and Cincinnati 2. Okay, guys, bottom of the ninth, tied at 2 still. Willie Hernandez is the new pitcher, and Ken Griffey is the batter. It is a 1-2-3. One, 1-2-3. Two, three. One, two, three. Ask is it both flash and fresh. And uh, Hernandez is definitely fresh. It's his first batter. It's semi-flash. Desire Die says he is. So, therefore, it's a strikeout. So, Griffey is struck out for out number one. And uh, the Cincinnati Reds, Sparky, is bringing in a pinch hitter at DH, Merv Rettman, the right-hander, to go against the left-hander, Hernandez. He's pinch hitting for Dreesen. Here's the pitch. It's a 2-5-5. Two, 2-5-5. Five, five. Two, five, five. Ask, is the pitcher a star? He is not. Is the batter a home run king? Rettman is not. Therefore, it's a fly out to left for out number two. Two down. Two down, and that'll bring up Concepcion. Concepcion. 
116. 116. Ask, is the pitcher fresh? Yes, he is. It's a strikeout. So we're going to extra innings. After nine complete in Sparky Bowl 1, would we expect anything else? It is the Reds, Tigers 2, and the Reds 2. Okay, guys, due to limitations on the length of my videos by this phone, I've got about 30 seconds left, so I'm not going to be able to play out the rest of this game on camera. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and, uh, once I post this, put the results what the final game was, and I may record it and put it on a second video if need be. But as you can see, after nine innings, we are tied at two in Sparky Bowl 1, so maybe we'll do Sparky Bowl 1.5 for the extra inning portion. But I hope everybody enjoyed that, and we'll see what we can do in this extra inning game.